Welcome to chapter two of the malware or practical malware analysis book. Chapter two deals with malware analysis inside of a VM. Basically, this really should have been chapter one. This is why we're doing malware analysis within a VM and kind of its benefits. It's actually extremely short, but the dynamic analysis is again running malware deliberately while monitoring the results. In order to do this, we need a safe environment because we must prevent the malware from spreading to a production machine. So real machines can be air-gapped, i.e. no network connection to the internet or other machines. Can a virtual machine do that? Yeah, they can. But real machines have some other advantages and disadvantages. Disadvantage for a real machine is no internet connection, so part of the malware may not work. You can't monitor it. It can be difficult to remove malware, so re-imaging the machine would be necessary. That's time. Though the advantage is, some malware detects virtual machines and won't run properly because of it. Again, that's not all malware, that's only a very small portion of it, but that does happen. Virtual machines, or running it as a virtual machine, is one of the most common methods for analysis. We're going to be doing that in all of our labs. This protects the uh, host machine and the guest machines from being infected with malware, except for a few very rare cases for the malware that would escape the virtual machine and would infect the physical hosts or the host machine. And the malware we're looking at is not powerful enough to do that, so we don't really have to be too concerned about it. There are different types of uh, host virtualizing software. We're looking at VMware Player or VMware Workstation. This is going to be a player is the free option, Workstation is the purchased option. We're using Workstation. Player is a option, but it can't do snapshots. But there's other items out there like VirtualBox, Hyper-V, Parallels. If you're using uh, Mac, Zen, again, plenty of other ones out there. Malware we're analyzing targets Windows XP, as most malware does. So the DB handed out in class should be a XP machine. Our lab will be both XP and Windows 7. The important part with this is how we configure the network adapters. Because they're virtual machines, we can, on the fly, disable the network adapters. We can bridge the network adapter with our physical uh, machine so that it will basically get its own IP address and it will actually be able to handle traffic by itself. Or we can set it to host only and that way, it will only communicate directly to the host and no internet. Uh, we talked about NAT, or we talk, sorry, we talked about bridged. NAT will allow us to NAT the address and will act as a virtual router between our virtual machine and our physical adapter. This allows us, uh, so this process to being able to connect to the internet, whether it be bridged or NAT, will allow the malware to do some harm if it's able to spread. So this is very controversial if we should be allowed to do this. It's about being careful, and as long as you're careful, it shouldn't be a problem. You could send spam or participate in a DDoS attack if you don't know what the malware does. So again, got to be careful with giving malware access to the internet, but there are some benefits. Snapshots, uh, this is a big thing. We use Workstation because we want snapshots. Snapshot is a way to go back in time, essentially. We could actually take a snapshot at, let's say, 8 p.m., and between 8 and 10, run malware analysis. We could be running the malware, see what's happening. 
we could be conducting the analysis. And when we're done, about 10, we could actually revert back to time before the malware is even launched. That way, we don't have to worry about if we got infected or anything, because we're reverting back to an earlier state. It's kind of like running a complete backup and then recovering from that backup, for example. Risk of using VMware for the analysis. Some malware may detect it and will run differently or what might not run at all. VMware does have bugs, so malware may crash it or even exploit the bugs in malware or exploit the uh, bugs in VMware, all depending on the malware we're using. Malware may be spread or could affect the hosts. So we have to be careful while doing this. Again, the malware that we're using is not harmful at all. We're using the textbook samples because they're not harmful. Again, this was chapter two in a nutshell. Chapter two is really about setting up your VM and kind of how it works. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.